so glad for this passenger station. It makes it very convenient to visit family across the state. Now, of course, the central ticket office does have separate men's and women's waiting rooms, making it a bit difficult to travel alongside my husband at times, but we're still able to get our tickets in a timely manner and meet right back up on the locomotive. And it never stopped any of the other townsfolk from using its services either. You see, while the second floor is occupied with the superintendent's office and an assembly room for the conductors, the lower level is often filled with travelers. Which is why I find it a bit odd that we are the only folks hanging about at the moment. <laughs> I assure you, it's not usually this quiet. You see, Columbia's retail businesses were booming in the late 1800s, so much so that the station was littered with buyers and sellers and dignitaries, businessmen, and of course, the common visitor. <laughs> And all of that commotion caused skyrocketing sales for the local newspaper boys, who would wait along the, the train depot and sell papers hot off the press. The political guests in town were always eager for a good read. Unfortunately, the station closed and moved to Enola and sold out to Penn Central, but it still remains a pivotal part of the advancement of transportation in Columbia. Oh, goodness. I have just come to the realization that if the station closed in the 1920s, well then I've just been waiting here for no reason. <laughs> I am so sorry, folks. It seems the train won't be coming to pick us up after all. Oh, this is quite a predicament I've got you all in now. Well, I'll tell you what. You're all invited to head on up to Columbia Kettle Works and take advantage of your $5 coupon if you wish to do so. As this concludes the Columbia Living History Plaque Tour. And I thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.